Hey, I'm Dave Shackelford with the Sands Institute, and I'm joined today by Tom Korn, who is the Senior Vice President of the Security Products Group at VMware. We're going to be talking a bit today about micro-segmentation and really what's happening in the industry as it pertains to isolating and controlling workloads and assets, not only within our data centers and infrastructure, but also, of course, as people are shifting towards the use of public cloud as well. So thanks for joining me today, Tom. Oh, my pleasure, thank you. Yeah, so uh, let's talk about micro-segmentation. Um, I think the first question, certainly one that I tend to get a lot as an instructor and as a courseware author at SANS, I talk to students all the time, there's a lot of differing opinions on what micro-segmentation is. There's, I, I think maybe, I don't want to say a misinformation campaign out there, but if you ask five different people, you might get five different answers. I'd be really curious to hear from VMware's standpoint, what do you guys really consider micro-segmentation and what's happening out there? Sure, so I guess uh, at the highest level, I think of micro-segmentation is how you slice up and compartmentalize an internal environment, a data center, a cloud. Mm -hmm. And you know, contrasting it with traditional segmentation, traditional segmentation is typically much more coarse-grained and much more aligned on infrastructure boundaries. You think of uh, your DMZ, production versus development. Uh, you uh, segment your app servers versus your database servers versus your storage servers. And in, a, in, a, in micro segmentation, in my view, it's when you're a bit more surgical and much more aligned to logical boundaries like an application or a regulatory scope. And, and the reason why that's so significant is really in solving two problems. One is how it does a much better job at solving lateral movement mm -hmm. and in how it does a much better job at reducing the complexity of policies. And, and the reason for that is when you use a traditional segmentation model, you end up commingling components from many applications together in the same segment. Right. And um, you know, as a result, if one web server, one app server is compromised, an attacker has freedom of movement to all the other web servers or app servers. And because a, an application is composed of components from each of these segments, um, the attacker has freedom of movement between these, right? It can move from the web server of application A to the app server of application A. So it really does very little in terms of um, reducing lateral movement. And then the problem of policy complexity is when you put a control in front of a group of app servers, you have to account for the policy sets for every application that's represented on either side of it. So you end up with a, a firewall with 30,000 rules in it, right, which no one ever in history ever removed one from one of those things. By contrast, in a micro-segment where you might segment the patient care system or the PCI scope, um, you don't commingle things from many applications. And as a result, you do a much better job at reducing this lateral movement problem. And furthermore, when you place a, a control like a firewall in front of a micro-segment that's based on an application, um, the policy complexity is so much less because you end up having 30 rules for one application as opposed to 30,000 for 100 applications that are represented. Right. Yeah, and I think that complexity is what people are really struggling with. Uh, one of the things that we've certainly heard a lot of at SANS is that people are, are struggling with it, with just sort of how they're going to, let's say, dissect all of these applications because everything is you know, jumbled together in their minds. And, and, you know, you've got traffic all over the place, you've got all this traffic. How would they go about starting to pull that apart and dissect it? What would be the discovery process that allows them to do that? I think that's a big challenge. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. Uh, this is really, uh, it's hard to argue, I guess, around just how compelling it is to segment in this way. And as, as you point out, uh, the, the most common challenge is, well, I don't know my applications. Um, uh, you know, and, uh, honestly, I, I think that problem had to get solved one way or the other because uh, I don't think it's possible to secure what you don't understand. Fair enough. And um, I think the good news is there's a lot of newer approaches and technologies to help one understand uh, the composition of their applications. And a lot of this uh, comes from the kind of unique visibility, particularly in virtual and cloud environments. And a lot of that, I think, stems from the, the layer underpinning 
um, all of these environments. You know, virtualization itself is a, it's an abstraction layer that sits in between applications and infrastructure. And as such, it, it, it actually understands the relationship between the two. It actually has to in order to do its job. Right. And uh, so uh, a lot of what's happening today, and for example, a lot of what we've been doing is using that position of the virtualization layer to be able to shed light about the composition of an application. And what that translates to is um, a technology that can translate uh, you know, a list of machines that you normally would see in something like vCenter to a list of applications and how those applications are composed. These are the web servers, these are the app servers, the database servers, these are the containers that are part of this. So a lot of that is um, uh, uh, provided uh, for you. And I think this is that, that combined with automation, in other words, the Solving the problem of microsegmentation in a manual capacity, right. I, I don't think will ultimately in the long term be very viable, in part because the problem we just described changes so often, particularly in a DevOps environment where you know, it's constant change. You're patching, you're updating, you're modifying the application. So having something that doesn't just figure that out for you, but keeps um, tabs on the changes and can help recommend and automate the process of forming those microsegments is really where the state of the art of the technology really has come to. You've got to have that constant visibility. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So Tom, another question that I know I've heard and I personally would probably ask you as well is sort of how microsegmentation handles you know, sort of the other attributes of attack scenarios. So in other words, this can't happen in a vacuum. You know, does microsegmentation really protect you from all of those sorts of lateral movement scenarios or all of those attack scenarios, given that there's also a heavy degree of involvement within the workloads themselves? It's the users, it's credentials, it's services that are being accessed. But what do you see happening there? What's evolving to sort of help with that as well? Yeah, so uh, it's a fair question. So. Um the network, the compartmentalizing a network boundary around an application certainly helps tremendously in terms of lateral movement. Another application gets compromised and I'm trying to move laterally. Again, because we've, we no longer are commingling components from many applications together. Um, it, it also helps just simplify the environment. And as you pointed out in the beginning, complexity is really what's killing us more than anything. In fact, mm -hmm. I would argue misconfiguration and misalignments are a bigger factor in breach scenarios than not owning a product. Right. Um, but as you point out, the, the remaining factor is, well, what if this application is hit directly? And the two real pathways, one is from through the front door, uh, users get access to applications, mm -hmm. whether they are malicious or whether they are compromised. Um, and then the second is through the back door, which is shared services, Active Directory, uh, DNS, uh, jump servers. Uh, and candidly, every agent that you put on any machine is talking out to something. And you're not, you can't just firewall those things. So, um, and I think that's where, uh, 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 a lot of this is evolving to, it's not just locking down the network, it's locking down the workloads, right? It's, it's uh, creating some level of a sort of new forms of application control that are essentially saying the workloads that compose the application can only do what they were intended on doing. It is uh, a technology actually that, in our case, it's a technology we created called AppDefense, which builds on, um, on vSphere to do that. But the idea is that if something has direct access into the microsegment, uh, the added protection is that <clears throat> they have a far fewer degrees of freedom to do things uh, because they can't just change a process, have a new process show up, have a process communicate to something different. Mm -hmm. And that helps uh, tremendously. And candidly, what this all boils down to is, is really a risk management exercise. The, the biggest chunk of our risk surface uh, has a lot more to do with the things that we do to uh, get rid of attack surface as opposed to chasing attacks. In other words, we can, if the question is, what can we do to have the biggest impact on reducing risk? The kinds of things that have to do with patching, segmentation, application control, will have a far bigger impact than 
the new form of antivirus that you might run on a right. machine. Yeah, so it's got to include that behavioral element of how the application functions yeah. as much as just the traffic pattern then. Yeah, but it switches to be a much more greater focus on ensuring good versus chasing bad. Right. And that, candidly, as a defender, is the only time we have an advantage over an attacker, right? Uh, an attacker always will know more about threats because they're the ones inventing the attack. Right. Uh, a defender should know more than an attacker on how they use their environment. And, and that's what a lot of these principles really rely on. Right? Uh, this is what I'm running in that environment. It can do what it's intended to do and nothing else. Mm -hmm. So I know you guys have recently sort of coined the term or begun using the term adaptive micro-segmentation. Can you just tell us a little bit about that? It really, really goes to what you were uh, asking about before, which is uh, if, if the intent is we need to have things that understand the application and can essentially automate a lot of the process of compartmentalizing the environment, as well as lock down the workload based on its intended behavior, mm -hmm. Um, then it's about creating microsegments that are automated and adapt to the changing application. And so uh, that's the idea behind adaptive microsegmentation, right? It's, it's really leveraging the virtualization layer to understand and automate the process of creating a microsegment and changing it as the application changes, which, as we were discussing earlier, is a complete necessity, especially as we move to a DevOps environment where change is constant. Uh, and so, you know, we had had some technology from a number of years ago called NSX that is used to virtualize the network and to essentially create these microsegments. And uh, over the last few years, built a technology, as I was describing earlier, called App Defense that uses the hypervisor itself mm -hmm. to help you understand the application and lock down the workload. And so we've we've been combining these technologies to essentially create. Uh, this notion of adaptive microsegmentation, where it tells you, based on your environment, these are actually what compose that application or that microsegment, and will actually program the firewalls for you. Fascinating. So it's it's the complete picture of behavior from the traffic patterns and the affinity of the systems that are communicating to the actual application workloads as they're changing. Yes. Yeah. And you know the technology that we really had to tap into in order to make this viable. Um, actually, DevOps helps tremendously because as you move to more agile DevOps uh, approaches, you start using a higher degree of automation. Mm -hmm. So automation, as you know, becomes far more declarative of what you intended uh, a workflow to be. Right. So we tap into that by integrating into a CI/CD pipeline. Uh, but the other factor, candidly, is uh, some innovative uses of machine learning, uh, where you know we're in a unique position to see millions of workloads. Uh, somewhere in the order of 60 million. And um, uh, we've been applying machine learning not to understanding malware, which is what's most typical in, in, uh, in security, Agreed. but to understand goodware, to understand what legitimate software behaves like. And it's, it's a wonderful use of machine learning because um, I liken it to the difference of using machine learning to know how to hit a baseball or a golf ball. In a baseball, you have an opponent, just like in a threat. Right, who's trying to constantly change where that ball is thrown and its spin, et cetera. Golf ball is sitting there. I'm not suggesting golf is easy, <laughs> but that sucker isn't moving. So right. it's all you. Uh, uh, and so it's a much more solvable problem uh, for machine learning. And um, so the combination of some of those elements have really allowed us to make huge strides forward in understanding the composition and the intended behavior of applications. Um, and to use that to do things like program firewalls or to use that to essentially lock down workloads. So Tom, I think given just how fast things are moving these days, given DevOps, given the CI CD pipeline, given just the nature of, of just dynamic change that's happening, what key takeaways would you have for the security community? You guys see a lot, you have a lot of visibility yeah into people's environments and how they're changing. What, what do you think? Yeah, uh, and, and I think you're right. I, you know, we've, we've had an, uh, been fortunate to have an opportunity to work with you know, thousands, literally thousands of, probably on the order of six or 7,000 companies at this point who are engaging on micro-segmentation. Yeah. Um, I guess, I suppose the three pieces of advice I would give. One is 
uh, you really do need to focus on applications to get really meaningful progress or impact from a security perspective. Mm -hmm. So the, the notion of not just trying to use new technology to do the same thing you did before, but really start to think about compartmentalizing things on an application basis. Um, the second I would give is that uh, don't just think about locking things down on a network boundary, that you need to think about locking the workload down as well. Um, because as we were discussing earlier, it's, it's not just about lateral movement issues, it's about things that have legitimate access through any firewall that you're going to place there. Users, shared services, agents, all of those things. So uh, you really need to think about that vector. And uh, the third is that you really need to start adopting a strategy where you're using some degree of automation in order to do this. Um, and that means uh, leveraging tools that don't just that look at network traffic, but also look at the activity that's going on uh, to help you understand the actual workloads themselves, right. and something that can help you automate much of this process. Because uh, there's just too much change, and that pace of change is only going to increase as we move increasingly to a DevOps approach. And security has to follow suit. You know, a you know, in my mind, uh, what secure DevOps means to me. Um, is a security that doesn't function in a waterfall approach while application teams have moved to an agile approach, exactly. but rather a security team that says, listen, I, I actually have a, an approach that um, um, uh, it takes into account the fact that that application is always changing. So it needs something that has a, a level of automation to it. Yeah, agreed. And I think um, if we stick with manual approaches, we're doomed. Yeah. So I would agree. Well, thanks so much, Tom, for joining us. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and it sounds like we've got a lot to talk about. And in fact, we can because we've got a webcast coming up on this topic on January 8th. Mm -hmm. And we've actually also got a white paper that will be released at the same time. So lots of things to come. Yeah. Fodder for thought.